The Whale is a 2022 American psychological drama film directed by Darren Aronofsky and written by Samuel D. Hunter based on his 2012 play of the same name. It stars Brendan Fraser, Sadie Sink, Hong Chow, Ty Simpkins and Samantha Morton. In the film, a reclusive English teacher with morbid obesity tries to restore his relationship with his teenage daughter. The film premiered at the 79th Venice International Film Festival on September 4, 2022 and had a limited theatrical release in the United States on December 9, 2022 before a wider release on December 21st by A24. The film polarised critics, though the cast performances, particularly those of Fraser and Chow, were widely praised. For his performance, Fraser won Best Actor the 28th Critics' Choice Awards and the 29th Screen Actors Guild Awards and earned nominations for Best Actor at the 80th Golden Globe Awards, the 76th British Academy Film Awards and the 95th Academy Awards. The film was also nominated for Best Supporting Actress for Chow and Best Makeup and Hairstyling at the latter and received a nomination for the Producers Guild of America Award for Outstanding Producer of Theatrical Motion Pictures. The Whale has grossed $28 million against a $3 million budget. The cast includes Brendan Fraser as Charlie, a reclusive, obese English professor. Sadie Sink as Ellie, Charlie's estranged daughter. JC Sink, Sadie's real-life sister, plays a younger version of Ellie. Ty Simpkins as Thomas, a Christian missionary. Hong Chow as Liz, a nurse who is Charlie's only friend and sometimes caregiver. And Samantha Morton as Mary, Charlie's ex-wife and Ellie's mother. Aronofsky said that he tried to get the film made for over a decade, but could not do it because he struggled to find the right actor to portray Charlie. After seeing portions of Fraser's performance in a trailer for Journey to the End of the Night in 2006, he decided that Fraser could be a good choice. On January 11, 2021, it was announced that A24 had obtained global distribution rights to The Whale, directed by Aronofsky and starring Fraser. At one point, the film was set to star James Corden with Tom Ford directing, but Ford left due to greater differences. George Clooney also briefly considered directing the film, but ultimately declined. Principal photography ran from March 8th to April 7th, 2021, in Newbury, New York. Post-production began later in April. For the role, Fraser spent four hours each day being fitted with prosthetics that weighed up to 136 kgs, or 300 pounds. He also consulted with the Obesity Action Coalition and worked with a dance instructor for months before filming began in order to determine how his character would move with the excess weight. Brendan Fraser told members of the media in attendance at the Venice Film International Festival, I developed muscles I did not know I had. I even felt a sense of vertigo at the end of the day when all the appliances were removed. It was like stepping off the dock onto a boat in Venice. That sense of undulating, it gave me appreciation for those whose bodies are similar. You need to be an incredibly strong person mentally and physically to inhabit that physical being. Following its debut screening at the Venice Film International Festival, both the movie and lead actor Brendan Fraser were given a six-minute standing ovation, a moment caught on camera that brought Fraser to tears. Long-time fans and critics alike have called the whale a revival of Fraser's career, after many years of absence from the big screen. The character of Charlie is loosely based on the film and play writer Samuel D. Hunter, who is openly gay and has taught expository writing at Rutgers University and battled binge eating disorder. He also serves as a typing double for Brendan Fraser in the movie. The news that Charlie watches on the television details the results of the 2016 presidential Republican primaries, implying that the film takes place in 2016. Donald Trump, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio are mentioned in these reports. With the exception of the opening scene and where Thomas gets off the bus and the flashback scene on the beach, the entire movie takes place in Charlie's apartment. The Bible verse that Alan is obsessed with and Thomas quotes to Charlie is from Romans 8, 12 verse 3. It follows, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh, to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. The film, however, has received criticism for its portrayal of a fat main character who is constantly shamed. Time magazine explained the controversy, stating some of the film's critics believe it perpetuates the triad tropes of fat people as suffering, chronically depressed and binge eating. On the podcast, Don't Let This Flop, E.J. Dickinson said the film was met with criticism for its use of prosthetic suit instead of casting an obese actor, with accusations that the stigmatizes and mocks fat people. Writing for the New York Times, Roxane Gay expressed her opinion that the film's empathy was only superficial and that the depiction of Charlie reinforced anti-fat stereotypes and preconceptions. She writes, Mr. Aronofsky said proudly that Charlie's story was told with empathy. He seemed to think he was being sincere, but I was bewildered because of an empathetic portrayal isn't at all was conveyed on screen. As I looked around the audience, I was struck by the fact that there were only four or so fat people in the audience and none on the stage. 
Director Darren Aronofsky responded to the controversy by defending the film, saying the criticisms make no sense. Aronofsky said actors have been using makeup since the beginning of acting. That's one of their tools. And the lengths we went to portray the realism of the makeup has never been done before, adding that people with obesity are generally written as bad guys or punchlines. We wanted to create a fully worked out character who has bad parts about him and good parts about him. He said that of fat people, they get judged everywhere they go on the planet by most people. This film shows, like everyone, we are all human. Now, I was completely and utterly blown away by this film. I think it's a magnificent film with an outstanding portrayal from all of its cast, but of course here, in particularly, from the fantastic, absolutely mesmerizing Brendan Fraser as Charlie. It is not often that I find myself getting highly emotional within a film, but this is one of those films that really does bring you to tears. It's an incredibly heartfelt, beautifully told story of a man literally killing himself slowly, almost punishing himself for what he deems as his past sins. This story tells many levels of heartbreak and the idea of miscommunication within our lives. For me, it's haunting, it's empathetic, it's beautiful and it's heartbreaking. And it all revolves around the story of one broken man who is trying to redeem himself in his last week of his life. Fraser plays Charlie with conviction. He brings him to life perfectly. And what he does is he portrays a flawed man, a frustrated man, a man who you will feel angry with at times, frustrated with and sometimes left feeling perplexed. But what Fraser does though is he brings an enduring side out of Charlie that makes you feel for him, want to understand him and even start to care about him deeply. For me, dealing with the character of Charlie now being also gay adds another element to the film and in many ways this film is more about homophobia within the small community and its lack of acceptance. That of course leads to Charlie's love, Alan killing himself, and of course then invariably leads to Charlie punishing himself almost to death. This film questions the morality of religion and its place within the world. It questions how we prejudge people, how we don't always look past the outer layers, and it delves deeply into the complexities of human emotions and human relationships. Charlie isn't a bad man. As he says in the film, I just fell in love, but by doing so, he also hurt his wife and of course abandoned his daughter, and she of course is entitled to have the resentment she has to him. Sadie Sink is absolutely breathtaking in this role. I feel this actress is becoming one of the finest young actresses in Hollywood today, from her fantastic performances of course in Stranger Things, but here she takes it to a new level. Yes, of course she's quite nasty in the film, but that's also part of being the angst-ridden, angry teenager that she almost in many ways deserves to be. She captures anger and sadness that comes from this parental abandonment perfectly. This film handles the themes of guilt, sexuality, religion and remorse in such perfect ways. And for me, never really oversteps the mark in its handling of any of these very controversial subjects. One of the outstanding performances in the film has to of course be from Hong Chao, who gives a fantastic performance in the vital role that balances Charlie's outlandish and almost strange behaviour at times. She's the hero of the piece, the only grounded character, and it's an excellent performance from Hong Chao here. Even seeing Samantha Morton in a very small but pivotal role is an excellent choice in casting. This is an incredibly powerful film, haunting, and is one of those films that will never leave your mind. There are so many scenes that will stay with me for a long time, but one scene that really stands out is when Mary, Charlie's ex-wife, is about to leave, and Charlie shouts out at her, I just want to know I've done one thing right, of course referring to his daughter Ellie. It's a most magnificent, beautiful and touching scene. Fraser deserves all the credits that he's got for this film. This is a powerful, heartbreaking and haunting piece of filmmaking that I will soon not forget. The Whale gets a 9.5 out of 10.